Don't go anywhere. Except on trips. Oh, hi there. How are you today? Welcome, YouTube. Another beautiful day in God's country. Uh, this is a Frankie Laley channel. What's today's topic? Jeff. My name's Jeff. Frank's over here. Here you go. Say hi, Frank. Oh, that's a yawn. Anyways. Uh, I want to discuss the G chord today. And not just the G chord. Frank heard a plane. Anyways, I'm going to discuss all of the G chords all at the same time. Because here's one thing that I think is lacking in terms of people who want to tell you the secrets about ukulele. It's just in terms of understanding. I know some of you are like, you know what, I've been playing music my whole life. I read music, I understand music theory. And that's awesome. Good for you. This should be really easy. You could probably skip this video and go to the next one. But um, if you don't know what's going on and you just started, you're going to hit like 75 G chords and say to yourself, why do we need this many G chords? Well, you don't. See, this is why you come. You come for the secret content. You need some of the G chords. And then at the same time when you're learning, it's important to understand that Maybe there's another way to play instead of being told, you know, put your finger here, put your finger here, put your finger here. So, essentially, we have four types of chords. We have a major chord, discussed in an earlier video. Major chord is your happy chord. We got a minor chord. Minor chord is discussed in an earlier video. Is your sad chord. You also have uh, diminished chords and augmented chords, which are awesome and useful and really, really, really technical and cool, but look, a G dim isn't going to come up very much. Unless you're playing the Canadian National Anthem, you're not going to see a G aug that much. So let's just skip them for now. Overlay graphic coming in hot. This is the G family. This is the G family. We got a G. We got a G7. We got a G minor. We got the G major 7. And we got the G minor seven we'll talk about these two also we have the cheater g we'll talk about that so we showed you the g before major g two fingers here there second fret almost top string and very bottom string and the second string runs between those two fingers my fingers are not perpendicular it's not a perpendicular chord it's a parallel chord i'm just going to call it from that it's a parallel chord and I take my third finger here and I throw it here. And I won't lie to you, if you haven't played a bunch before, this is not comfortable. But what I will tell you is a month from now, you're going to check this video out and you're going to be like, oh man, I remember when G chords were hard and now G chords are easy. And some of you get your fingers here right away and you're like, G chords are super easy. And then you go and you try and play a song and you're like, it's the hardest. When all the other chords are one finger, two fingers to all of a sudden go from one finger to try and jam those on there it's muscle memory how do you get better at it well you do it we'll talk about that in the next video this is my g chord it's a triangle there there and there think of it as a triangle and it points this way and it starts in the second fret it's a triangle shape that's its shape if you graphic coming in hot g7 is the next chord if you take that triangle and you make it point the other way. Now I'm starting with my first finger here on the second string. And I'm putting these two fingers into the E minor 7 position. Remember E minor 7? It was this. We'll do it with this and throw your first finger on. Now you got a G7 chord. It's a dominant 7th chord. That's theory language. I don't love theory language for beginners. What's the use of a, G, of a dominant 7th chord? It's juice. It sounds juicy. It's that same unicorn snot that we learned on the E minor 7 chord. So, what's the big deal with it? Um, it sounds cool some of the time. If you are playing a song, ready? This is a ukulele secret. The ukulele intelligentsia do not want you to know this secret. Um, if you are asked to play a G7 chord and you want to play a G chord instead, it works great. Never, ever have to play a 7th chord. You don't. You just don't. You skip it. You're like, G7, I like G chord. Play it. It'll always work. 
Um, is the reverse true? No, the reverse isn't true. If they ask you for a G chord, don't play G7. It won't sound right. I mean, occasionally we sneak them in because we're sassy and salty and we want to sound really, really fancy. But most of the time, if you add a Dom 7 in the wrong place, it's going to sound goofy as heck. So what am I telling you? If you need to play a G chord, play a G chord. If you need to play a G7 chord, play a G chord or play G7. I don't think they're that big a difference from each other. They sound different. But in terms of playing, you know, when I started playing, I guarantee I picked one over the other. All right. Next chord. The minor chord. You don't see in ukulele playoffs a ton of G minors. You want to learn how to play Let It Go Frozen? You better know your G minors. First finger's here. Second finger, this one here, is going to go one, two, third string, second fret. And then I'm going to put this one here on the second string, third fret. It's a perpendicular chord. It's got a nice sad sound to it. It doesn't show up a ton, but when it does show up, it's a pain to get to from wherever you're coming from. You're probably coming from like a C chord, and then you need to get to a G7 or a G minor. You're in there. I juiced that up terribly. Okay. All right. Now, the final two. First of all, you'll notice I'm not teaching you a G Dimin, and I'm not teaching you a G Augmented, because when they come up, you'll figure it out, you know, like six years from now when you have to play O Canada, and you need a G Augmented because you're playing in a weird key. All right. G Major 7. It's right here. It's a G Major chord, and a G Major chord will always work when you need a G Major 7. It just gives us an extra little juice on top of it. It's usually used when we're looking for a little different voicing in terms of it. So, uh, looking through a window above is like a story of love. Those are all versions of the G chord. Yazoo. Shout out to Yazoo, by the way. Looking through a window of love is like a story of love. Once again, get the words wrong. Um, you're just barring. Now, three ways you can play it. Finger, finger, finger. You can please this finger, 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 finger. I use uh, generally my second finger, and I push down all threes. In ukulele language, we call this a bar. It's not a bar chord, because I'm not touching all four strings, but there's your G major 7. What does major 7 mean? <sighs> all right, here's a theory lesson. This is a G chord. It's got a 1, 3, 5 in it. This is a G7. It's got a 1, 3, flat 7, F natural. When you put a seven on a chord, it means the seventh note of the scale is going to be added to the chord and it's always going to be flat because sevens are always flat. Unless you want them to not be flat, which would add an F sharp instead of an F. And then we go with the major seven. The major does not refer to the chord, it refers to the seven. So it is a G major chord with a major seven. G major seven, G major chord, that's just the G major seven. Can you substitute a G major seven on top of a G seven? No. Can you substitute a G major 7 on top of a G chord? Sometimes, but you're going to get an unusual voice. Uh, can you substitute a G chord every single time you need to play G major 7? Yes, every single time. It will absolutely 100% work, right? What's this? Um... Don't know why I didn't come. There's your G major 7 with all the juice on it. G minor 7. Two strings here, first and second fret. You can play with two fingers, and then add your third finger to the second fret third string. I'll show you the picture again. It's been a while. It's this one right over here. That gives you the G minor 7. All right, so what's the story of the G minor 7? It is G minor chord uh, with the minor 7 on it. The minor now refers to the chord, not to the 7. Because the 7 is already minor by being 7. 7s are always minor. G major 7 is a major chord with a major 7 because we said major before the 7. But G minor chord is a G minor chord with a flat 3rd in it and a flat 7 because it's a... You, who cares? G minor 7. How often do you use it? Next to none. You're just not. Can I substitute G minor on top of a G7 chord? G minor 7 chord? Yes, because you never have to play 7s. Can I put a G minor 7 on top of a G minor chord? No, don't do that. 
Always take away sevens, never add sevens. Well, not never. Hey, it's your ukulele. You do you. Anyways, um, the last thing I want to show you is the Cheater G. What's the Cheater G? Um, well, I invented it. I'm pretty sure I invented it. Somebody else will tell you they invented it, but they're wrong because I came up with it first. You see this top string here? Technically the fourth string. We call it the face string. That's a G. How is this useful to you? Well, let's imagine that you're trying to play your ukulele and it keeps asking you to play G chords and you aren't good at them. So you're like, all right. And you get into the crippling G chord. While you're learning, it's perfectly fine, number one, for you to leave that chord out and go. If it, you can't play it, don't play it. Just leave it out. We call it sniping. Sniping is where you leave the chord out. There's also something called reverse sniping, where you take the hardest chord the song has, and that's all you play. You let everybody else play the C's and the A minors and stuff like that, and you just sit on that G and wait for it to come around. So everybody else goes, you go, it's awesome. You want to practice your G's? Just play them. All right, but you're playing a song, and you're playing a play along, or you're playing with your friends, or you're playing, and that G chord keeps coming up. Not only do you not get there in time, but it's hard to get away from it by the time you get to it, and then you're in the wrong part of the song. What do you do instead? You play the cheater G. That's the cheater G. So, C, A minor, F. Does it sound like a G chord? Nope. Will anybody notice? Nope. Nobody will notice. And if you're playing by yourself, who cares if you notice because you're by yourself. If you're in a group, nobody's going to notice. You did this because it's a G. Which chord does this cheater G work on? All of them. G dims, G augs, G minor 7, G sixes, G sus fours. Anytime you got a G and you're like, you know what? I don't know. Just play this top string and smile while you do it. And if somebody does notice, Like I said, three months from now, you're going to be laughing. You're going to be like, dude, who in the world thinks a G chord is hard? Well, I do because I remember learning a G chord, and it slowed down everything I did in life. I'm trying to learn these awesome songs like Echo Beach, and all I can do is hit a G chord and wait and watch my fingers adjust to the chord like this. Okay? So if you're looking at the fretboard, we've all been there, every one of us. Even ukulele gods like Jake Shambirko and they, they all did it. They all looked at their fingers and they all stopped playing and they all got super frustrated. So you can too. Just try not to do it in Guitar Center Canada because, man, nothing will get one of those guitar guys over faster to show you all how fast he can play Riptide. <laughs> Going down to the rib tide. Anyways, this is my G family tips for you today. Hit like and subscribe. Uh, that would be wonderful. Pass it on to your other ukulele friends, and we will see you on the flip side.